and then I'll screen so you can. Turn on the video. <laughs> okay, can you guys see this? It says great project type steps from toolkit. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, good. So this was the guy. Yes, you can see it. But now the thing is, I sent this to people, but you know, if people don't read. <laughs> So I'm still getting people sending me messages yesterday. Okay, we're ready to submit our video. I'm like, that's nice, but where's the portfolio? And they're like, what portfolio? <laughs> so we've got some projects that are just videos, not portfolios. So I don't know how we're going to manage that. It depends how many there are. And also how we're going to judge the videos because there's no guidelines on how to judge videos. You know, we've never judged videos before. And um, so we're going to have to play it by ear and see how it goes. Mm. For that. But the main thing is that we want to make sure that the impact is the key. With whatever we do, it's always impact, even if it's a research project. And research means you don't have to do the actions. But research can still make an impact because something that they research might be something very valuable that can be implemented by someone else. You know, they need to give suggestions at the end and say, like, this is what we found is the problem. And we suggest that this, this, this can be the solution. And those things can be amazing things. Just because they haven't done it doesn't mean that it's not impactful. So whatever it is, creative project, action project, research project, all to have an impact. So our same YCAP methodology of impact stays. Even if it's not written in the same format or done in the same way, we still have to look for that, even in a video, even in a mm -hmm. song. That is what we're looking for. And if there is a problem with the portfolio, then understand that they've never done YCAP before, we can help them with that. If their video is amazing and we're like, wow, we can help them to get the portfolio to match the video because basically they know what they want to do. They just haven't put in the format. So I think that's why it's important that we said the deadline is the 1st of November, because I wanted us to have time to actually do something because we never had a district round. We never, never had a provincial round, so we couldn't give feedback along the way. So this is our time to do that. And then once we find those who have potential, then we'll say to them, okay, guys, this is really good, but you just need to do this, this, and this and come back. So they will be the finalists still, but they won't, Maybe they'll be like finalists and they will choose only semi-finalists to be in the next round. You know what I'm saying? So we'll have different levels and um, help them to get to that point. And remember, it's all about empowering people. That's what it is. So we will not be horrible and say, oh, well, you did the whole thing wrong. You it disqualified. We're not going to do that because it's the first time that we've done in this format. So no one really knows exactly how to do it. So as you see here, it says grades R to grade four. The toolkit was just a guide because look, when you're that young, it's a bit difficult to go step by step with the toolkit. So they can use the steps, but we don't expect it to be amazing. But they do need to do the actual project. So it says for the toolkit, it must be a separate essay on the topic. So some people are asking me, can we have the essay inside the, the steps? Like it's all the same thing. I'm like, no, it's not because the steps is how you got to the conclusion. And then the conclusion is that essay. So it's like the working document is the toolkit. And then the essay is a separate item so that's what we're looking for the two separate things and then for the action projects obviously the the action project is YCAP so they have to use that step-by-step -step guide because that's what it's all about and for the creative then the toolkit is just a guide and they could submit their video song dance drama poem whatever whatever but remember it must that song dance poem whatever must be related to their topic so if they say their topic is unemployment we have to see in that video or that song or whatever that they are trying to solve that problem of unemployment either by creating awareness about it or giving people ideas on how to get employment or um, showing how employment is really important, whatever it is, but it has to actually be. I want to say the random song dance about anything, you know, it has to actually be linked. So that is very important for us to make sure. And then grades five to seven, obviously now they can use the toolkit more. So for the research projects, I said they're only steps one, two, three, four, five, eight, and 10. But if they do all of them, it's fine. If they leave out one or two, you know, we'll make a plan. Let's not be strict about that. But at least if they use those steps, then their research will be better than if they don't use the toolkit. The toolkit is there to help them. You know? so that's what I want them to understand. And then the action project, obviously, they have to use all the steps. And the creative projects, I've just said one, two, three, four, five, eight, and ten as well. But as I say, if they leave some out or they add some in, it doesn't matter. But let's just make sure that whatever is there is done properly. Like the, I saw one project was submitted, there was like pieces of things, but it wasn't fitting together into any kind of order. I was like, um, something's missing here. And she's like, no, that's the project. So I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Uh, then grade eight to 10 also, 
all the steps as possible you know, as much as possible and then the actual essay of the research project the action projects all the steps creative projects same and then obviously grades 11 to 12 are similar so it's not that different from what we usually do the only difference is that right column of you know what is the research project we've never done research projects we've never done creative projects so that's what we need to understand and discover how we're going to mark them because how do you mark a research project that's what we have to figure out how do you mark a creative project so we have to get some kind of format and that's what this call is about to get some ideas so we'll we'll actually take one of the projects and use it as a case study and that's going to help us so the adjudication sheets from before that i just took as a guide is this one but obviously that's based on all the steps so i just added at the bottom here um i don't know if it's this one yeah it is okay so though it's steps one two three four five six seven eight nine ten but i made a change on this thing it's not showing up or maybe it's here yes i added at the bottom here there it is yeah where it says research or creative element so that's a new section i added in and that is about you know the actual research projects and the creative element obviously we'll have to look at the points and see because that will probably have to count more now it can't just be the one line item of just 10 points so we'll have to make it count more and then the future plans Obviously, the action project will be all of those steps because that's what the action project is. But for the research or creative, we have to add in points for that. And then the future plans, I just said bonus marks. So if they have a future plan, that would be cool. But we don't know if they will. So we have to work out how much to add for this research or creative element and what we're looking for. That's all we have to look at today. So what are we going to add? So what are we judging? In the research and the creative... Obviously, number one is impact. I think research, you know, we have to look at how they research. Sometimes people don't, they don't quote sources, you know, like university students know how to do that, but school kids don't really know. So what happens if they just, you know, copy and paste stuff from the internet and they don't, they don't put any sources. So we need to say that for the research project, the sources I mean, it won't be written in the exact way that you would do at university, but at least to mention, we got this from Wikipedia, we got this from, they have to mention Oh, this. the bio. Yeah. Because, you yeah. know, if you just take someone else's work and you paste it, it's plagiarism. You can't do that. So we'll teach them yeah. that. Okay. So we'll, we'll um, explain it to them. Remember, it's a developmental program. So if we see that they've done that, we'll first say, did you know that this is wrong? Please fix it. And if they can't fix it, then it's a problem. So we really hope that they can. The sources are important for the research and then also for the research as i said the impact we'll have to get from the suggestions so after they've done the whole research project they can say but we suggest a b and c as a solution for this problem so that has to be in there and for the research also did they did they just do the normal boring research like just go and copy and paste and just say oh, i got this from wikipedia done because that to me is not a research project like they need to actually put some work into it they need to maybe interview people you know in some primary sources like let's say the project is unemployment go talk to some people who are unemployed and say guys what's it like to be unemployed so primary sources you know interviews if they have that they're definitely going to get more marks than someone who just went to google right and then also in the research projects you know it's, it shouldn't be like two paragraphs like how much information can you really get there it should at least be something meaty something at least a page or two pages long so I'm going to say length, but not length as in just talk rubbish for the whole two pages, <laughs> like length and quality. Quality. And also how they put the work together. You know, it must all fit together. It can't just be like a paragraph here, then another paragraph, but they don't link. So the, the flow should flow. Okay, so I think those are the six things that if I was looking at the research project, I'd be looking for. So the one is impact, which is the suggestions. The two is the sources. Did they mention the sources? Three is primary sources. Did they do interviews or something with someone, not just internet? Um, four is length. You know, how long was it? Is it just like two lines, two paragraphs or a whole page? What is it? Quality. Is it like something meaty we want to read? And then flow. Does it go from one paragraph to the next to make sense? Like a beginning, middle and end. Um, so I'm going to say structure. Is there anything else that you think we need to add to that? 
it makes sense. Mm. I, I, I think personally from my side that it basically covers everything. Um, I think as far as primary sources and like doing research, like just getting information off from the internet and then uh, bringing it on paper. Um, when we look into incorporating primary sources, we could say that it's fine for one to go to the internet, get information on the internet, but then it, you also need to apply it because that's how we are going to get it to see whether you understand what you got for, from the internet yes. or not. Yes. Um, that's where they are going to then, for example, if they're going to look for information that has to do with unemployment, mm -hmm. when they apply that information they got from the internet um, on, the, on the topic of unemployment, that's where then they're going to interview people who are unemployed, people whom they can relate to. And that's how we are going to basically see if they understand what they have decided mm -hmm. to pick as a topic and the information they got on the internet. So I don't think there's anything else that we need to add. And I think what you said just now is key about applying, because you know, if you just take information and you just put it there, without talking about it, analyzing it, discussing it, then it means that you don't really know what you're talking about. You're just putting it there because it has the topic in the keyword and you're just like, oh, there, unemployment. Then. So they need to like mm -hmm. discuss it, like not just put the source, but discuss it, talk about it. So I'm just going to say apply knowledge. So apply that knowledge into something, explain it, discuss it, you know? I think that will Kind of like elaborating it further. Exactly. Elaborate further and show that you understand. So the comprehension. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. I think we're done with the research. Now the creative one. So the creative one, number one, we want impact. Obviously it must, it must be doing something. It must be a message that actually gets somewhere. Is it an awareness message? Is it a, you know, is it um, an action message like trying to change behavior? Like what kind of message is it? That's number one. And then number two is the professionalism of the, you know, the thing, like the quality of it. Is it just shot on someone's cell phone and they're just like shaking their hand like this? You can't even see the pictures properly and the sound is shocking. And when I say that, you know, someone might have a bad cell phone, that's one thing. But when you're like literally shaking your hand and you can't see anything, it's because you are shaking your hand, it's not your phone. <laughs> so I'm saying it's okay if someone doesn't have a great cell phone, but if they're not even trying to make it look okay. So just like the quality of it. You know, is it something you can actually watch? Or is it like, oh, I can't even look at this. <laughs> so the quality of the, the picture or the sound. And then obviously creativity has to come into it, right? I mean, it is a creative project. It can't just be boring. It has to be something interesting that has to be thought about. They have to have, you know, put effort into it. Um, and some of them are like poems and things like that. So we have to see that there's originality. So something unique, so something that's from them, not like they just, you know, wrote like a four line poem in five minutes and said, there we go, done. You know, they have to be thought around it. So those are the four things I can think of for creative. Do you have any other ideas? There's impact, quality, creativity, and originality so far. Hmm. So we'll leave it at that for now and then when we go to an example we might come up with more so the thing about um the stuff that i've received as i said the quality is all different varieties so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we write in these adjudication sheets exactly like the details we can't only write the scores because they won't know what we're talking about so we have to write in the comment section at least a little keyword some things that we can remind ourselves what we wanted to tell them because we might forget, we might be like, oh, it's four out of 10, but we don't know why. So um, comments are important because we have to give that to them to you know, help them to improve. And also to help them understand if they really got a bad mark, why? They're gonna say like, why did I get a bad mark? And we say, there we go. Look at this over here. It says you didn't put a map, you didn't, um, you didn't manage the team, you didn't do this, whatever. So comments are important and um, 
what I'll do is I'll add these things that we just spoke about for this um, research or creative element, I'll actually add it into the sheet. So those little elements will be added in. And then also here at the end, questions and comments, if there's anything general, you can write it there. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll get maybe two people, at least two minimum, to go through each project. Because maybe someone will like it and someone won't like it, and then in the end you'll get a balance. Or maybe both of you will hate it, then we know it's really bad. Or both of you will love it, then we know it's really good. Because I think just having one person judge is not enough. So two people, and then what I'll do is I'll create a link. Do you guys know how to access Dropbox? I send a Dropbox link. Dropbox. Yeah, it's like a, a link to a file, and then all the things will be in that file. It's like Google Drive. I can put it in Google Drive as well, that's the option. So it's either Dropbox or Google Drive. And then all the files will be there. So you, everyone can access them. We just have to make sure that we don't have everyone doing the one school and no one doing the other school. So we have to manage who's doing what. <laughs> so that's what we have to work out. So I'm going to say Dropbox. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Dropbox and who? Who's judging? So here, like on my computer, it's already in my Dropbox, so it says there Dropbox. Do you see that file? There's a little box and it says Dropbox. Yes. But when I send that to you, um, it will be a link. So I'll go here and I'll say, um, yeah, share. So let me share it now and see if you guys can open it. Let me send it to... Create link, yeah, create link, there you go. So now I'm going to send it to the to you guys in the chat. Will you go to the chat and check? Okay, there's the link. Can you open it? Yeah, open it and just see if you can see all those files. Uh, where is it now? I don't see the link. It's in the chat box. Look at the chat on Zoom. At the bottom of your screen, it says mute, stop video, security participants, chat. So I get the app. So we still have to download it, some of us who don't uh, have it. Okay, fine. So I'll put it on the group as, you know, the WhatsApp group as well. Or maybe I'll make a separate WhatsApp group just for the judges, because I don't think everyone wants to get all this information. So I'll just save this link. Just save it and later I'll create another WhatsApp group so we don't irritate everyone. Okay, so let us go. You don't need the app inside. You also don't have it. Okay, so I'll just open up one of these. I don't know which one, maybe a random one. Should we look at a... Um, I was saying. You were saying? I was saying that you don't need the app to to um to have access to the documents. You can also access it through the website. I think what they meant was they can't find the chat on the Zoom because they haven't downloaded Zoom as an app. I don't know. Is that what you guys meant? Yeah, you don't have to have it. It can be online. You don't have to download Zoom. I mean, Dropbox. Okay, let me just open this. Let's just open this project. Yeah, you, you can access the documents. You got them. Okay, good. I do. I do have Dropbox. You okay? But then the link that I sent in the chat. If you just click that, it should open. Oh, let me just see if I can. I can send it to your WhatsApp. I've sent it to your normal WhatsApp. Okay, thank you. And on Fundo as well. Okay. But let me just open this project up and share the screen and we can just practice on this one.
Okay, do you see the blue picture? Yes. Okay, so this is one of the projects that's come through. So this one is on gender-based violence and mental health. It doesn't say what kind of project it is, which it should. <laughs> so we don't know. <laughs> okay, and then they've put in some little picture here. Little quotes. Here's some quotes. Another picture. Now it's a story. Here's a nice story. Well, not a nice story. It's a horrible story, but <laughs> it's about the topic point. And so they're talking about the murder of Unyinye. And then they're talking about stats at the police service. This looks like a research project to me. Okay, it's talking about that still. And then it says that to this day, nothing much has changed and women are still victims of GBV. Now they're saying what is causing it. So their causes here are lack of education, physical, emotional, mental, sexual, something, abuse, um, verbal. I don't really understand how they drew this, but I understand what they're trying to say. And then they say there are many examples of gender-based violence. It's also a profound human rights violation. Now they're talking about how much people are spending on trying to stop it and that it's not making a difference. Okay, it can result in those problems, unwanted pregnancy, sexual transmission of STDs, dropping out of school, injuries, unsafe abortion, and that. And then they're talking about mental health. I think they're trying to link the two into one. So now they're talking about mental health is another topic. Okay, they're saying who it is. Um, it's caused by what? And then they're talking about depression. And they're giving a case study of HHP. Now they're talking about, here yeah, for the black child, it's sometimes seen as irresponsibility or rudeness, and sufferers are often chastised for their symptoms instead of being shown care or compassion. Okay, and in some ways to avoid mental health illness or mental illness is value yourself, take care of your body, I don't know. And then they just put references. Okay. So that's their project. Now, if you were judging this, what would you say? <laughs> Remember, this person's not here, so you can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, okay. Okay, what your face? Okay. Um, for me, I don't see... Um, the, the steps, I, didn't, I don't see that they followed the steps. Yeah. It's like a, a, a story in the book. It's just turning the picture. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. I, I see it, it's like a book. It's like I'm reading a book. Yeah. And the thing is, at least if they had the toolkits elements attached, then we would see where they got all this from. Yes. I don't have that. It's just this. They haven't said anything else. So we would have yes. to tell them, go back and do the steps and then come and make this cohesive. That's the point of the step, right? Is to make it look more like a, a cohesive project. Because like here, yeah, he's put in two different topics and they're not linked. You know, I don't understand the link between the GBV and the mental health. It's not clear yeah. how they are connected and why, you know? So that's my question about it. So yeah. And then here, the only tips that are given are these ones here about mental health, some ways to avoid mental illness. Not about if you've already got it, what do you do? <laughs> you know, like a helpline or something. <laughs> like, sorry for you, if you've already got it, it's too late, you know? No, like they haven't given any advice <laughs> to if you already have. Yeah, so that, that wasn't very helpful. And then at the end of GBV, they just said it's like a hopeless case, but they didn't give any advice on how to fix it. Just end it, yeah. It said, one way we can put our... Yeah, okay, they gave a few ideas. One way we can put an end to the cycle of domestic violence is to come together and break the silence. Don't let the experience experience you. Contact Women Organization for Help. Okay, that's nice, but give some examples. Like say, for example, contact Power people opposing women abuse. You know, research, it's a research project. They didn't put any research into that. Yeah, it's not clear. 
<laughs> you know, we can just thumb suck and say, contact women organizations, <laughs> but it doesn't give you the actual detail. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they actually scratched the surface, but they didn't get deep into the topic itself. Yeah. It's very yeah. surface, surface level. It's not deep. Let's talk about raising awareness of the dangers of harmful tradition. That's very general, very, very general. Educate yourself and others about gender-based violence. Yes, but how? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's our comment on that project. Let's find another one. I think we should watch a video, you know, one of the creative ones and see what that's looking like. Let's try this one. Okay, this one's nine minutes. We won't watch the whole thing. Very professional so far. A white project on unemployment. I'm with Mr. Mangani here, the head of finance in Greater Gear Municipality. Mr. Mangani, afternoon. Afternoon, uh, Divine, how are you? I'm fine. Mm. So, we're going to ask you a few questions about unemployment. Uh, well, we have observed that the current unemployment rate in South Africa is 23,3%. So what do you think are the effects of unemployment in South Africa? I can't see the video. You can't see the video. Can't see. Can you hear it? Yes, I can hear the video, but I can't see. Okay, so it's just a little girl sitting next yes, to the man and she's interviewing. So nothing much to see. It, uh, uh, there is high employment, unemployment in South Africa. Okay, let's fast forward. This is boring. <laughs> I'm just checking if the whole video is this interview. It looks like it. Yeah, the whole video is yeah. just that interview. The beginning and end are the best parts with the titles. <laughs> okay, so what do we say about that video? If we're judging that video, what do we say about it? Is it just the interview only? Just the interview. That's it. And very fancy title in the beginning and end. But the actual video is just the girl interviewing the man, asking questions. Like a news... About unemployment. Yeah. It's like a news bulletin. I think it lacks creativity. It looks? It lacks creativity to start with. Yeah. Yeah. It, it lacks creativity, not from the visual aspect, but from the fact that, you know, when you start an interview, it should be catchy from the beginning. Yeah. Or there should be something that captures your attention, your mind, or that attaches you to the mm -hmm. interview up until the end. And from, from what I have heard, it doesn't really make you want to sit out through the nine minutes and hear out what they have to say. Also yeah. considering the yeah. fact that unemployment itself is not really such a glamorous topic that we all want to talk about. Yeah. So it lacks creativity. It's not really catchy. Maybe from the visual uh, from the visual point of it, it's, it's catchy, but if you just had to listen without having to see the video itself it doesn't really the video is basically you. just the little girl um, next to the man like talking so there's nothing interesting about the visual they don't show pictures in the background or anything it's just the two of them talking they're just talking to just each talking other. it's like a news bulletin you know when you sit and you interview someone like the interviewer interviews the celebrity or whatever like that's what it is and they're just talking the whole time so it is boring even if you didn't see it there's literally no it's not like pictures they showed, like posters. I think or... also. Yeah. Yeah, Camarillo. I think also then it it lacks yeah. it lacks or it, it lacks originality because without any sort of without any sort of you know illustration or something that's a bit more emotion evoking other than just talking about unemployment, mm. is more or less the same as any traditional interview. You know, you sit down, you ask me questions, I answer questions. It doesn't really say anything. And that makes it lack originality for me. 
there's nothing original about you know conducting an interview as it would be conducted by anyone traditionally mm. um especially because i feel like the questions themselves in that interview aren't really as thought provoking as they are supposed to be or as cutting edge as you would expect them to be yeah so i mean you would like you would, you would expect that the questions themselves would address issues such as um how do we differentiate between someone who's looking for a job but is accounted for in the unemployment rate hmm. versus someone who's not looking for a job and they are both accounted for how do we differentiate between um the balloon um unemployment rate versus the actual unemployment rate because if they had also done like a proper or deep um research into into their topic they would have realized that what government actually did this year for example is that they have a balloon uh, percentage rate which is about 41% if i'm not mistaken um and then there is the actual percentage of unemployed people with the balloon one they have included everyone who is supposed to be working but they are not working mm-hmm. whereas with the actual figure it only includes people who are actively looking for jobs but they aren't getting those jobs so such issues also need to be tackled so that we sort of find balance so yeah. I, i feel like it lacks that originality as well no i agree it has it also affects the quality of their workers and also the fact that i don't know what their portfolio looks like because we've just looked at the video but if they followed the the toolkit they would have realized that they need to actually do it in a different way you can't just talk to someone like it's it's a boring way of doing it like you need to have something else you need to add something you need to bring the next yeah. level <laughs> you know it's not going to get you very far just doing that Okay so we looked at two not great examples but at least we saw that they have potential and they can improve and what we need to do on those adjudication forms is not to be harsh like we can't say like you guys are terrible we have to be encouraging we have to be you know empowering and give them advice because some of them will go back and fix it others won't and if they don't they if they don't take their second chance then that's fine you know then we've done our part but at least give them that opportunity by giving them good feedback that they can use. So that's I think what we need to do is be very kind. Remember this is like district level. You know when you go to district competition and you're like wow, some of these people don't know what they're doing. But it's not because they don't want to know, they just don't know. Mm. And the the tools to make themselves better next time. So that's what we're going to have to treat this as and then the ones who go and put in the effort and fix it and send us the new version those are the ones who are going to do well. So we're treating this as a district round, I think that's the key thing. So we can't be harsh like as nationals, you know. It's not nationals, it's still district round. So let's yes. treat it like that. Now it says we've only got 4 minutes 17 left. So is there anything else that we need to talk about about this judging? That's not clear. or is it clear like you can i mean from the examples you already knew what to do yes yeah okay so i'm going to edit that judging sheet and send that so that um those things we spoke about are included and then let's just try you know let's just take those ones in that folder that i sent you and and let's give them feedback and then send it back to them and say guys this is our first round response and if you want to go to the next round make sure that you put in the effort Yeah, work more harder. Yeah, work harder. Cuz some people were already asking me questions um, about what to do in the project, which means I hadn't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kama. Kama hello. Um uh, could could we also add um Yeah, it's on here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, go for it. Yes, we can. Hello. Okay. I was saying could we also add recommendations? Could you also add recommendations um or solutions um on both with the research and the creative categories? Yes, good idea. 
like make them exclusive that at the end we need to hear what are you recommending Correct. or what are you suggesting so instead of just saying impact we'll say that because i already had um, suggestions under impact for the research but we can change it to be more specific okay cool okay i will do that and i'll send it to you guys and to whoever else is not on the call but we recorded it so everyone will see exactly what we need to do and i wish you all, all the best of luck as we do this together and we see how it all turns out in the end it's quite exciting now it's going to end <laughs> <laughs>